Sandy Ella for Good News, and I'm here today with Shlomo Danziger, Mayor of Surfside, Florida. Uh, I've got a really hot election coming up next week. Hi, Shlomo. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, um, Sandy. Thanks for having me. Couple of questions for you. Your opponent keeps saying that you favor developers and you plan to change zoning. What's your response to that? So it's been two years and we haven't changed zoning yet. Um, we are accepting of development and understand that that's a part of the process with cities and change. Um, that doesn't equate to giving developers favors or any of the other things that they've accused us. Um, it's important to note that zoning here has remained the same in the last two years. We haven't increased the sizes of anything. Um, we've just made it the process easier for homeowners and people like that to go through that process of submitting paperwork and, and permitting um, to try to make that an easier process for our residents. Okay, you just touched on my next question. Surfside's permitting right. delays. Um, it's probably not one of the town's best moments at the moment. Um, are there any plans to expedite that process so people can just do, I mean, not talking about anything major, but I understand any little thing people want to renovate in their homes um, becomes a major issue. So it's been, uh, you know, remember, we walked in after a culture where of anti-development and anti-growth. And it's not just commercial, but it was for the homes. They didn't want to see the larger homes that are happening. They blamed the Jewish community for that. Um, the, you know, the Jewish communities moving in with four or five kids, even though that's not the actual uh, case. You have people that are building homes that just want a guest house, a guest room. Um, they'd like a place to work, a home office, especially after COVID. So you're starting to see people take advantage of the code and build those homes that have always been loud. Um, additionally, remember that the plot of lands here were worth $60,000 going back a few years ago. So who's going to build a $2 million home on a $60,000 plot of land? We're at almost $1.7 million just for the land value, which, you know, allows for people to go ahead and invest in that property. Now, so we did walk into, like you said, a culture where it was very difficult to obtain permitting. Um, they removed a lot of the processes, inspectors that were currently, that were previously in-house and those were third parties. So they would come in once a week. So we've reopened a lot of those positions. We've brought new people in, uh, 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 building inspectors, permit inspectors. We've digitized the process. We're almost finished that process right now, but we, you know, we've digitized a lot of it and we removed the requirement to go to planning and zoning for a lot of different things that residents would want to do. For example, you know, garage conversions, uh, roof replacements, uh, fences, hedges, gates like that, things that previously had to go to planning and zoning and that's you know months of a process now are simply could be approved by our uh, our plan uh, our, uh, sorry our yeah my understanding was if you had a 40 year old condo and you wanted to replace your kitchen that required a permit and this isn't that's not even about expanding or somebody new moving in like you just look and say okay my oven is 40 years old i need a new oven um is that something that required that was a problem till now so, yes, well, one of the things we did was allow for straight change outs, um, except when it comes to electrical and plumbing. So if you're moving your sink over and you're changing, you know, your shower around from location to location, you're going to have to go through a process. But if you're just changing out your vanity or your oven, for example, you don't have to go through that process. Now, what you were stating for the condos, that's separate, right? Every condo has their own individual rules and their own way that they run through it. Mm -hmm. And that's up to the condo board if they're going to require plans to be submitted. But the town of Surfside doesn't require any plans to go through for um for any straight change outs. Okay. Um, I understand that the state of Florida has passed legislation in the wake of Champlain Towers collapse to ensure that buildings are structurally sound. Is Surfside doing anything above and beyond that given, I mean, just the the whole sensitive nature of everything in Surfside and, you know, everybody feeling so rattled? So Surfside was at the core of a lot of those changes that happened here and they started in the county. Um, our building official is on that committee that came up with a lot of the proposed changes that we saw instituted in Miami, the county, which has now um, been effectually adopted by the state. I mean, the state is still trying to figure out a lot of their um, a lot of these laws. They they just went through their third version of this bill. Um, but one of the things that we recently did was any building going through recertification or had a life safety issue that they were trying to address. We've reduced the permitting fees for that building within the town to try to help alleviate some of that cost. Okay, a January post on the Dan's Deals blog website, whatever you want to call it, quoted your opponent as saying that he's not in favor of having eateries in town that are closed half the weekend. Do you believe that if elected, your opponent would try to shut down kosher restaurants and limit growth to make Surfside less attractive to Orthodox Jews? So, I mean, those were his words, not mine, but I don't know how he would go ahead and do that. It, it's not within you know the confines of the law. You can't go ahead and require that. Um, I believe he may go ahead and try. Uh, you know, he has brought, when we came into the commission, we had multiple outstanding lawsuits because that commission saw themselves as activists 
rather than the keepers of the proffers, which is your job as elected official. You know, you're, you're in charge of the town finances and projects, and that's really what your role is. But they saw themselves as activists, so they stopped beach shares. They went after the FAA, which is a futile fight that we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars of taxpayer money on for no reason. So is it beyond the scope of what he may come in to try? I, I wouldn't put it past them, but it ultimately it'll be a futile and it'll be a large cost for the residents here. No, just okay. At the end of the day, the residents are the ones who are going to be paying for that if he's going to try something. Yeah, people forget that. You know, this town fought uh, the construction of the Young Israel, and I think it was five and a half million dollars by the time all said and done over, again, a fight that somebody just didn't want to see another synagogue go up. But that was taxpayer money, five and a half million dollars. We could have paid for, you know, a lot of the flooding projects, which we're having issues right now. This is money that can go to benefit our town in other ways. But if you're going to find this one issue to, to, to attack on and, and waste town payer money, uh, taxpayer money, um, you know, it doesn't benefit the town in any way. Sure. Okay. Um, Surfside right now, I mean, there's just everything is just so hot and sensitive. Um, what are your plans um, over the next two years to just reverse the climate of divisiveness that currently exists in Surfside? So, I mean, we came in, you know, my initial speech when I was elected was all about bringing the community back together. What we saw after the collapse was a community united, right? It didn't matter what color you were, what race, what what gender, what what ethnicity, everybody just came together and tried to help. And, you know, we were out there for weeks on the streets. And that's what we saw our town as, you know, that should have been something that that was a lesson I try to continue out over the last two years. Um, I've had to face issues that, have issue, you know, flag issues, different issues that Surfside never had to address for decades. And for some reason, you know, throw in the Orthodox Jewish conservative mayor and suddenly all these world issues became a problem that I had to address. It shouldn't have been. It should have always been on, you know, safety, street signs, pedestrians, you know, enhancing the community, which is what we've been working on. Um, one of the things that we did was we made a lot of our events. We brought kosher food. We changed some of the dates from Saturdays to the weekends on Sunday. So more of the community can come together. And now if you come out to our events, which are very successful, you see everybody in the community, all different demographics out there. So, I mean, in, in actuality, I think we were successful in bringing the community together. I think it's just a few problematic people that just want to create this divisiveness, which has been historic, you know, for elections. It's like, the opponent is not running on a platform. He's not running saying, here's what I would like to see for Surfside. It's Surfside is very divisive, so I have to come in, right? We're torn apart. But who's done that? So, you know, you have to look at that. It's really just a few people that scream and yell. But ultimately, if you look to your left and your right, the town has improved in so many ways. And if people recognize that, I recognize the work that has gone in over the last two years, they would see that. Terrific. Tell me some of the things you've accomplished over the past two years and what you hope to accomplish over the next two years. So one of the big things I ran on was pedestrian safety. I know I said that a few times, making our town more walkable. Um, our town was started and founded in 1935, and it started, you know, smaller homes, retirees, and now you have younger families. You have a lot of uh, people walking the streets if they're walking their dogs, not just children, but that is because that, that has become, you know, the primary demographic here. So I ran on making my town more walkable. We have a lot of cut through traffic. Um, that goes through the residential neighborhood at high speed. So that's been a main objective. Our streets belong to the county. So in order for, for me to achieve and propose solutions, I had to do a traffic study. And it took the administration initially months to start that study. The study was 10 months. It's There's a design process that goes involved now that was six months. So that that is a, a project that's going to carry over, God willing, to the next, you know, to the next uh, two years. And that's really something I wanted to address. Um, but some of the things that we did, the easy, you know, the low hanging fruits, we put ADA beach mats uh, for the elderly to be accessible, you know, to, to easily access the beach. Um, lighting on the beach path was something I wanted to address for years. You know, Bell Harbor always had this beautiful beach path. Surfside was dark and shady. So, you know, we added solar lights onto the beach path so people could utilize our number one resource a lot longer into the evening hours. Um, We've done outdoor exercise equipment. Uh, we built three parks now. Um, we have our third one about to open. And this is all to enhance the community. So what we would like to do, I'd like to continue to focus on community safety. Street lighting in the community has been an issue. It was something that I tried to address during the first two years. Um, the administration kind of threw it into the undergrounding project, which is a project that's going to span for, for many more years. And I think lighting is an issue that has to be addressed immediately. Um, I do want to partner up more with the school. As something I already started with Route K Broad, for example, which services most of our residents' children here. Um, you know, as a city, I think we need to partner up more and bring um, some more availability. We have, for example, a pool here 
I was talking about a water polo team, you know, for the school, which doesn't have a pool right now, or just even swimming lessons for some of the classes, um, but whatever resources we have to try to give to the kids of the community here. Any closing words you want to give to people to um, just in advance of that March 19th election? So the election is, uh, is March 19th, um, but the the availability to vote is happening now. Uh, the, the polls are open at North Shore Library, 75th to 76th Street on Collins, uh, from I think 10 or 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And I really would recommend that residents and, and people don't wait to the last minute to vote because you don't know what's going to happen Tuesday morning. You know, if your kid is sick, if there's a business trip, a wedding, a bar mitzvah, you're out of town, which has happened a lot. So please, you know, it says in uh, Elvis, don't put off the today, something, you know, tomorrow, something you can do today. So please just wake up today. You come home from the office today, go out and vote because you don't know what's going to happen. Later on. Amazing. What time the polls close? Nine o'clock? Uh, 7 p.m. Seven. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there should be no excuses. Terrific. And every vote counts. And that's really another point. And, and I appreciate that time. But, you know, I won by 25. For me, the mayor won by 40. Um, you know, the Surfside has always had very close elections and people should not underestimate the value of their vote. Um, what I saw in the last election when I pulled the numbers and I found the names of who was voting, I mean, we don't know who they voted for, but you can see who voted. Many people came out, their wives didn't come out, their kids didn't come out. So if we would have, if, if we would have had that turnout back then, instead of winning by 25, I could have won by 500, 600. We wouldn't find ourselves in the predicament we are now. Um, so please, you know, make sure that everybody in your house is voting because every vote counts. Okay, get out and vote. Terrific. Shlomo, thank you so much. Thank you, Sandy. I uh, hope to hear I it all as well. Thanks. Have God a great well. day. Thank you, Sandy.